This video will be a tutorial for installing mods for Metal Gear Solid 5 as well as installing and using cheat tables for Cheat Engine for Metal Gear Solid 5. The first thing that you'll want to do and is needed to mod Metal Gear Solid 5 easily is to go and download the Snakebite mod manager off the Nexus. This is a mod manager allowing you to patch files and assets of the game dynamically as well as being able to handle sword order and mod conflicts. Once you have it downloaded, you have a zip file that you want to extract out. And you want to extract out the installer. Open the installer up, run the installer, install it wherever you would like. Once it's installed, you want to launch it. Once you launch the installer, you want to run through the installer. It has you specify the actual install location for Metal Gear Solid 5. So you want to navigate to your install location, select the EXE, then click Next. Then it will want to back up. You can skip this, but I suggest you back up. That way if a mod somehow breaks it, you can restore all of them. This will take a little bit depending on your computer. Once you have this installed, you want to download a mod. Uh, in this case, we'll be showing off the first person mod built for Snakebite, which you want to download that file, which again will give you a zip file to extract out. And inside the zip file is a .mgs5 file, which is a specific type of file used for Snakebite to install. So you go to Snakebite, click Mods, go over and click Install MGS file. Then you want to navigate to your installed mod folder, wherever you put the mod folders. Double click the .mgs5 and it will pop up the description as well as the installation order that you can put in. Here you can also install more additional files and reorder them for priorities on conflicts. Once you've chosen your mods, click continue, click OK and then it will proceed to install it. At that point, congratulations, you now have a mod installed for Metal Gear Solid 5. So you could then launch the game and your mod should work correctly. In this case though, a big part of this video is specifically showing off Cheat Engine and how to use cheat tables. So we can close out Snakebite now that we have the first person mod installed. And we would go over to the Cheat Engine website which you can find there will be a link in the description and you want to download cheat engine now there's a high chance when you download it that it will get flagged as a virus so what you want to do is go into windows defender and you would want to all right you would want to go into your protection history if it's not shown up right there click on it make sure that the exe is the correct cheat engine installer and click allow You may need to re-download the EXE after you allow it. Again, Defender will probably pop up because they really don't like Cheat Engine. So you click More Info, which then allows you to run anyway. Click OK on your language selection. Next. Now, big part here, you want to make sure to either click skip all or decline because it will try to install obnoxious toolbars and other random shit. So you click skip all, it'll skip all that and let you just download and install Cheat Engine itself. It's a very important part. Now once Cheat Engine's installed, it will try to launch. Do not do that. Do not do that. Once you have Cheat Engine, you're ready to use cheat tables. Um, a big thing about cheat engine though, before we go on, anytime you wanna play a game that has like an anti-cheat, um, Valorant, uh, anything with battle eye, easy anti-cheat, you wanna make sure you close out cheat engine because it can flag those anti-cheats. Last thing you wanna do is get banned because you were modding a game with cheat engine and then forgot to close it. Once you have Cheat Engine installed, you can actually double click and open CT files, which are cheat table files. So in this case, the Metal Gear Solid 5 dither cheat table that I made, you can open up and then you'll have your actual cheats down here at the bottom. 
So we'll go moving forward into launching the game so you can figure out how to utilize this cheat table, as well as how to use the first person mod because it has a hockey. All right, so once you're actually in the game and physically in the environment and you're not in the main menu or in any of the loadout screens or anything, you can activate the first person mod by pushing down arrow and whatever your zoom button is set to. So in my case, and by default, it's set to V, which puts you in first person. Now this mod has to deal with a engine feature and limitation, which is the dithering system in the game, where being close to things causes them to disappear. Uh, you, can all you can leave first person mode by doing the opposite, holding up arrow and then the zoom button, and then you have to aim which pulls you out. Uh, when in third person you can see the dither where when you get close to Snake he fades away allowing you to have a better you know viewpoint. Now of course that causes issues if you want to use the first person mode because you know your camera's always next to Snake so he will always be clipping. That's where the cheat table comes into play that I made because it allows you to disable the dithering effect from the game. Uh, cheat Engine works by manipulating the actual memory of the game, allowing you to edit the dynamically ran assembly code of the game. So in this case, you would open up... Uh, so in this case, you would open up the cheat table in Cheat Engine. Then, before you can do anything, you have to click this icon at the top left over here which lets you select what to connect Cheat Engine to so it can see the memory and be able to edit it. So in this case, you'd want to select Metal Gear Solid 5 since that's what the Cheat Engine and Cheat Tables were for. Then you want to click Yes to make sure you keep the codes here. Because if you click No, then it will just default to nothing and you have to reopen it again. Now, once you have it connected to the process, you can actually turn these on and off by checking the checkboxes here. You can also press spacebar if you want while you have one of them selected. So in this case selecting the dither removal causes the dither to turn off. So now when we get right up close to Snake the dither no longer turns off uh, or causes his body to become transparent. That means when you're in the first person mode if you look down you actually have a body and same thing when you aim you will actually have a gun. Now this has its own sort of limitations in the fact that you kind of, you know, clip all around. If you sit down and lay down, you constantly are seeing Snake left and right. Which is a bit of an issue. That issue is actually why the experimental version of the Dith or Cheat table has these two settings right here. Which are designed to actually stop the code that handles your body disappearing when you go into the actual official first person view. Because when you do this, the only parts of your body that are there are your gun and your arms. So normally, they disappear, then they reappear. So if you were to enable these, which r removes the code, when you do this, obviously it can't make the snake's body disappear, so now you're clipping into his head and it looks terrible. So what you have to do is you have to enable these when you're actually in the first person mode already. So you want to aim into it, Pause the game, then you can alt tab out, enable both, unpause the game, and now you just hands. Which of course means now if you want to go into the first person mode, you have very minimal clipping due to the fact that, you know, you're only hands. There is a limitation to this so far though, which is the code set to run your body reappearing and disappearing also handle snakes guns so if you switch weapons you can see I don't have an actual assault rifle anymore uh, it doesn't actually appear because that part of the code is disabled that is a current limitation if you want to get rid of the clipping so you're only floating hand if you instead disable both the hide bodies and then go back into first person so your body's back obviously That won't be an issue if you're playing with the clipping to an extent. As you can see though, memory editing can get kind of destructive. 
So in this case, the assault rifle is just invisible completely and probably needs the game to be restarted to come back. So you don't really want to be switching them on and off too much. It just can cause problems later down and can cause crashes and, and issues because of how all the code of this is connected into the game. None of it's separate from anything and it touches other things that can happen. Now an end goal of the cheat table would be able to actually go on here and have multiple different settings to be able to individually disable certain body parts. That way you can actually have very minimal clipping by having all the guns being visible and the arms being visible and maybe like the legs but the torso has gone for instance which is like a big part of the clipping. But I haven't gotten that to work correctly yet because again all the functions are set up directly connected to the cameras so anytime you move the camera technically the game is running down the same functions and the same code and the same assembly that handles the body parts re-enabling, disabling, and has such crashes a majority of the time when you tamper with it. Now, the one thing that is disableable without any issues so far that I've seen is the actual dither removal. You can clearly turn that off and Snake will just start becoming transparent again without any issue. So that one probably works fine. I would not suggest turning the experimental ones on and off. Uh, either decide to keep them on or keep them off. On a final note, I want to point out a specific thing with Infinite Heaven, which is a huge, amazing mod that adds a huge amount of things to the open world of the game. Installing it ends up overwriting the same files that the first person mod actually runs and handles, and as such, you can't install them both in Snakebite. However, one of my commenters ended up finding out that there's a certain folder that's actually placed by Infinite Heaven in the main install directory of Metal Gear Solid 5 that you can actually put the first person camera mod into, and that lets it run. So to do that, you actually need to get the actual LUA file that runs the first person script. Luckily, MGS5 file types are actually just zip files, so you can open them up in any zip file program you want. Extract out the asset folder, and you can open up that, locate the actual custom camera LUL, LUA, locate the custom camera LUA, then copy it over into your actual main install folder, which now has a mod folder, you want to go into there, open up modules, and you want to paste it in there. And if you do that, then Infinite Heaven will actually dynamically load the first person camera LUA, and it will work with Infinite Heaven installed. So then you could have Infinite Heaven, the first person mod, and the Dither removal cheat table all running at once. If you are actually installing it through Infinite Heaven, as a .lua file, you can actually open it up in a text file, having an actual big text file like Notepad++ will format the text and the code, which will make it much easier to edit. But you can actually find these two lines right here, and changing them will actually change the zoom and FOV of the first person mod. Uh, I s do not recommend using the default values, to be honest. They're very zoomed in. so. Alright, that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them. Hopefully I'll be able to answer. And yeah, bye.